Okay, hopefully this works. Let me see. And chat. Okay, so I think we're working and we've got we've got our two video players up. And let's see here. Okay. So anyway, this is Mark and uh so tonight's show is going to be a little bit hard to work out because <laughs> I forgot that uh, having one screen is kind of uh, confusing to work with. Um, so uh, anyways, we've, we're have we going to be testing out some of our animation tonight. And let me minimize my chat. And let me just see if this works. Okay, so we've got our, uh, we've, what we've got is actually um, a program called Heron up here. And we're going to set our FPS a little bit lower. Um, this program is free, and let's see, he has to try eight. It's a free program. So I've got a, uh, a Nikon lens uh, cap here, you can see, and it seems to be in focus, which is good. And uh, so let me go back to here, and so that's good, this is good. All right, hey, Hoser Lou. All right, so last time what we did on our show was we made these uh, replacement lower body parts for our mother character. And so these will be for a walk cycle. And this here is the neutral right here. We've got uh, an up for the, the mid walk and then uh, for the, where the feet are the farthest apart, we've got like this sort of really far squash um, replacement. And so, I'm going to try and put these into the frame. Now, I don't really need to test both of these. Like, I could test the left and the right, but I only need to test one. So I'm gonna put this in the frame. And let me minimize this. Okay, so, also let me get rid of the, um, the one video so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna make sure it's focused as well as possible. Actually, I should probably raise this up a little. Can I raise it anymore? As high as it goes, okay. Well, that's as, as focused as it will get, but that's all right. Let's put in our neutral. Okay, so I'm gonna take a frame of video. <laughs> I always wanna say film, but it's actually video, right? So I'm gonna take a frame. Oh, got stuck there. And the next body shape. So let me put on onion skin to make sure that I can line this up because obviously and the the bottom part is what's going to be solid so the the body has to actually move up and down and so the trick is getting it to look natural let me see here That's where the body was originally. And to the lower body. Not sure if I should curve this or what. Maybe I should. Because I'm trying to look at it from an animation perspective. And the front does not actually come out, it's just the back. That's how I sculpted it. So let's line it up like this. Push the body down. I'll take a frame. Now, I don't really know how this is going to work out. Um, in fact, let me go back. Let's delete that. Can I delete that? I can. Frame deleted. I wonder if I can copy that. <laughs> I wonder if they have the ability. Ah, oh, I can't do it. 
All right. Well, I'm not really acquainted with this program very well. I have to go back and redo it. I thought I could copy and paste that frame in there, but I can't. That's okay. Easy enough to do. Let's line it up again. Take a frame. So what I'm doing is, um, I'm gonna shoot these on this all on twos because I've only got four replacement pieces to work with. And so this is sort of like uh, I mentioned last time, it's sort of like limited cell animation. So we're kind of trying to get it away with the least amount of parts to save time. So this would be two frames. And then, now I'd also be adding some little arm sway in there and the head would have a little bit of a bob to it and everything. So it'll look a lot nicer in the final sort of uh, rendition. But for now, we can at least see sort of what the, the tail will look like. And I think it's not gonna look 100% right. But we will find out. So two frames of that. Then I'll go back to the larger piece. Move it up again to about See, Oop. somewhere about there. Go back. Yep, it's about there. Then the neutral. about two frames. And then the highest pe uh, replacement piece goes in there. And this will be held for, of course, two frames as well. But this should complete the cycle. So I'm gonna raise it up. So I'm kind of using her apron string as the, the height indicator. So I can see if it's sort of angled this way or angled that way too much. So this way I can line up the body and make sure it's actually moving in the up-down position. So let's take two frames and put it in loop mode and play it. All right, so uh, So I think this looks pretty good, actually. I think this will work. Now I've got like a little indentation in there, which I might animate. Uh, I think I could sort of, when, when she gets squashed down lower, I could probably add in some more detailed folding sort of lines in here. So I'm gonna do that. Otherwise, I think that's pretty good. Let's try to analyze it here. So the tail part moves out. I have to contemplate if that tail is sticking up too high. But no, I think that's probably good. I think because it would be like her, her dress is sort of in the back, it's kind of coming up a little bit as she walks because it's your, uh, that point your legs would be the furthest apart so it would kind of go up a bit yeah i think this is good and probably when i do the final animation what i'll do is i'll have the you know like the arm kind of swinging back and forth 
the head will have a little bit of a follow through and it, yeah, that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do next, let me put on my uh, audio camera. So uh, let's see here. So how's it on? So Blink is asking, how do they do the cut away claymation effect like in Peter Gabriel's video? It looks like they were cutting away at a long tube of clay that has a changing image that morphs as it's revealed. All right, well, that's a good question. So the way that that works is they uh, they create a log of clay, and David Daniels is the guy who invented that technique. Let me see here. Um, so what they do is they they take clay like this, you know, a chunk of clay, and um, first they will sketch out what they want to have inside this clay. So, for example, if they wanted to pre, you know, animate what I was just doing there with this body in front of me here, uh, they would have to try and visualize, for example, where the hand goes. They want to have a hand go swinging back and forth. Um, so they would literally make a snake of clay and like put the clay in there, and they would, you know, first they would, uh, David would sort of like put the bottom layers together and then figure out where the hand goes and then cut into the clay as a as a log you know um there there's actually some videos on youtube where he ex he shows his process but um it is a, a very difficult thing to do super difficult and only a few people have ever done it successfully believe it or not i mean it's that there. So this little fold that I've got here in this clay, what I want to do is I want to animate that in these layers here, or these replacements. So I'm going to a little bit here like this. And since this is the really squashed replacement, Um, I'm going to little dust particles there. Maybe extend this out like this. We're going to give this a bit of detail so it looks more natural. And kind of getting here. And I'm not too worried about this being super smooth. I kind of want some texture in this because as it was animated, I could tell it was a little bit too plastic looking. You know, like it just looked a little bit uh, too smooth for my taste. So, I'll go like this. Kind of get some more detail into the clay. And there. So the same with this side, I'll probably just add a little line here. Sort of to indicate where the fold begins as it comes down and then this one has a fold that goes across sort of here and just make it look like an accordion you know as the accordion kind of comes together the folds increase and as it comes apart like this it's more smooth
So IMM, you have a cold or something? It's never fun. Uh, did I see the new Star Wars trailer? I did, yep. You know, I am a little bit afraid to watch that movie because... Uh, Mark Hamill said so many, like, hinted at so many bad things about the film regarding his character that, you know, he did, he didn't really hide it, <laughs> you know. He's like, I didn't really care for it. I mean, not really like that, but he's like, uh, a lot of it didn't make sense to him as a character. Like, he tried to figure out sort of where his character fit into everything and... He had a lot of questions, like, how come, uh, why didn't he try to save Han Solo? Didn't he see his friend in trouble, like, in Empire Strikes Back, you know? So he was kind of upset about that, and a few other things. And then, so with this latest film, he hinted at those things. Like, he, he didn't really have a lot of input, you know? And, um, I don't know, is that good or bad? Because the story is not completely about him, of course. It's about the new characters, but it is also a continuation of who he is as a character as well. So I don't really know if if I'm if I see it, if it'll ruin the previous Star Wars movies for me. Like if I don't like it, you know, <laughs> like that kind of a thing. It's kind of silly, but that's that's how I feel. I just hope it's good. We're gonna see it. Um, I think on the. I think the 27th or something like that. We we already have tickets for it. My uh my brother-in-law always treats us as a Christmas gift as a family. He buys everybody Star Wars tickets because it's been, you know, a a yearly thing now, right? Cuz they've been re releasing them every Christmas time. So, I don't know. I'm a little excited to see it cuz I want to see what Luke does. I'm more more excited about Luke and Carrie Fisher's character more than anybody else. I mean, if like if Finn were to die, I'd be like, well, okay, you know. Or uh, or Poe, Poe Dameron, it's like, okay, you're dead, <laughs> you know. But uh, the other characters, I guess, I grew up with them, so it's it's maybe different for me, for my generation, I guess. But uh, yep, yeah. we'll see what happens. Might be really good. Oh, yeah, that's horrible. I mean, there's so many fires now in California. I, I saw that on the news. It's like either there's hurricanes, floods, fires, earthquakes. There's a lot out there right now. I mean, the Mexico earthquake was really tragic there. Lately, I just want to turn the TV, you know, keep the TV turned off. Don't read the news. There's too much bad stuff happening. All right, so I'm going to just accent this a little bit more here. Let's see what that looks like on camera. A little bit further back. You know, sometimes with, uh, with sculpting stuff like this, there's a tendency to not want to be bold and to be afraid to sort of really deeply go into the clay and sculpt it, you know, to really put in a nice deep groove in something like this. Um, so sometimes I have to tell myself, you know, make it nice and deep, make it nice and, you know, whatever I'm trying to do, like rounded or oh, there's a mosquito in here. All right, so what I'm going to do, I think I'm probably going to take this and animate it and see what it looks like with the new lines. So let me go back to Ooh, is it 3,500 homes? I thought it was less than that. Oh, wow, 21 people died. Right? Yeah, it's really horrible. 
people are stubborn too. You know, they won't leave. Frame deleted. Frame deleted. Frame deleted. Frame deleted. Yes. Frame deleted. We know that. We know Frame that. deleted. We know that. Frame deleted. <laughs> frame deleted. Sorry. Frame deleted. It wants to tell me that frame I deleted. deleted each frame. Frame deleted. Frame deleted. Okay, so. Let's reanimate this here. Just to see what this looks like. Pretty easy the second time around. Once you uh, once you figure out how to animate something once, it is pretty simple. So let's play this and see what it looks like. All right, let me put this on how many frames per second? So I think about Yep, that's a lot better with those little folds like that. I think it really shows the compression of the body, you know, for each, for each step there. I'm happy with that. What do you guys think? <laughs> so what I'll need to do next with these is I'll need to add the front part of the apron, and I had to make re little replacements for each of the positions. So let's do that next. Um, let me first see if I can turn off the voice part of this. So I don't, uh, <laughs> oh wait, can I? Sound, talk to me, I'm gonna turn the talk to me off, okay. Let me delete all these frames. Okay, there we go, that's better. <laughs> right. Let me put this on as well. Oh. Oh, that's why. Never mind. Um, there we go. So you guys can see the chat better that way. Uh, yeah, Hoserlu, you're right about the arm moving and stuff. I'm not going to really worry about that right now. I'm just worried about the lower body parts and seeing how that works. Uh, obviously, she'll have a head and there's going to be some follow through. Someone like she bobs down, like the head will kind of move down for one extra frame and when she goes up maybe it will stay up for two frames or three frames and then come back down so yeah it'll it'll definitely it'll be more intricately animated for the final final piece but for now this is good this is what I need to do so uh, so I'll put the aprons on here and see how that looks next and if it looks good the walks will be complete. So she's got like a little, um, why did I take these off the last time anyway? <laughs> it's got this little knot that goes behind her apron. So I'm gonna kind of clean this up. 
Oh, I guess because I cut it before. I had to cut the body. That's why I took you off. Move this down a bit. Let's go like this. So. I could even animate the knot if I wanted to. I can have that, that knot in her uh, in the back there just kind of like going up and down. And a little bit of extra movement. Let's see, is that the right side? Nope, it's not. It's this way. Oops. <laughs> yeah, the talk to me setting is a little bit annoying, isn't it? I mean, if you're blind, maybe, but then you couldn't see what you're doing anyway, so I don't know. It is a mystery. So how did I do this the last time? I guess it was... Which direction did I have it? I think it was this direction. Was it like this? <laughs> I don't even remember. Where did I have it? So the body is here. Like this. This one also. And there's the apron, which goes where? Is it this way? It might have been this way. Yeah, maybe you're right about that, I am toys. Maybe if you especially maybe if you accidentally like hit the delete button or something. Did I delete that frame? I don't know. Maybe not. That's why the talk feature. Alright, so I don't know. I think that's wrong. <laughs> Which way did you go on there? this way well we can always start over which I think I'm gonna do anyway because this is this claims a bit dirty so let's start that over this here I'm gonna throw away I think starting from scratch is the best way to go So I am toys. You had dragon frame, okay? Yeah. What do you like about it? What's what's your favorite feature? Okay, so I'll take my knife. Let's cut this in half. this So Janet says that Leia well, not die, but Luke probably is like Yoda. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like with Force Awakens, they kind of made the Star Wars universe just like Episode 4. Just a repeat of the same movie. Essentially. 
obviously not 100% the same, but really close. And so that's kind of like, all right. And uh, I know a lot of fans are upset that it's kind of like politically correct also. It's like they try to make sure that the characters are diverse, you know, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, some people think it's too in your face and some people think it's too much like episode four. I don't know. There's too much. There's a lot of politics in Hollywood lately, which is not nice. People are pretty mean, actually. <laughs> People can be so mean. Especially after that last Ghostbusters movie. That was sort of the pinnacle of... People really just going after actors and actresses. And I don't know, I just... And uh, what's the new movie, Blade Runner, that came out? Blade Runner, the, I guess that their their uh, box office ratings are not super good. But it's a good film, I heard. You know, like uh, it's it's like their marketing wasn't good on that that film, supposedly. I don't know. There's a lot of weird topics. That's why I like stop motion. Less politics. <laughs> so let's see. So our apron here is, this is the neutral position where she's standing. And as she comes down, her apron has to be shorter and the folding of the apron has to be slightly different as well. So f for these we're going to have it sort of squashed and I think the lines will need to sweep backwards somewhat because when she's moving forward you kind of expect there to be like a trail in this direction away from the body so I'm going to like this and then slice the clay and the thickness is what's going to matter here so let's take our tool this tool is a bit dirty but I don't know where, where's my other one oh it's over here I'll use this one it's a bit smaller so roughly We only need to shorten this a little bit. So we're gonna measure it, <clears throat> what we have, and then a little bit shorter. Transfer the dimensions to our clay. Just enough so we can see it, and then I'm gonna cut across like this. And we need to have a trail going this way, and a trail going that way. So we're gonna, or I'm gonna, slice the to have a bit of a trail. Now maybe not so acute, maybe less like this. And Janet says, I just I just wait only for one scene. The new cantina with canteen with glowing beans? <laughs> I don't know. What is that? I don't know what that is. Glowing beans. I haven't seen that yet. Maybe I gotta rewatch the trailer. <laughs> All right. So now I think this is gonna be too short, or not too short, uh, too narrow. So I'm gonna stretch this a bit because I want it to come back more than that. 
I want it to squash as well as trail backwards. So this will probably be better like that. Same with this one, we're gonna stretch it, pull it a bit. Without breaking it, hopefully. And apply it to our clay. And make sure that the, the line flows the same way. go yeah I'm really interested to see the outcome of the that new Will Vinton documentary that they're creating um, which I posted up on our, our Facebook fan page. A link, there's a, a Kickstarter. They're about halfway done with it. And um, <clears throat> it sounds really good. Um, Will Vinton is kind of, has never really talked about the transition from his name to the studio Leica. And so I'm really curious to see what he says, what his feelings are about that. Peter Lord is even in in that uh, documentary. Which I guess Peter Lord, you know, paid paid close attention to that transition at Ardman, you know. Peter Lord's a really nice guy. I don't know if um, he follows uh, American Studios, all of them very closely, but Will Vinton Studios was the biggest at that time. And when they transitioned, you know, it was big news for stop mo this, the world of stop motion. Okay, don't want that to be so far back like that. Let's sculpt this. <laughs> okay. There we go. So roughly like this and this one's gonna kinda round out some of this. Make it really look like it's cloth. So the final one, well actually it's not the final, this is gonna be this will be the tallest one, but I want this to be really swept back and the shortest of all of these. So it has some some squash and stretch, and the stretch is gonna be in this direction. So again, just gonna flatten out some more. So I'll have to figure out about how wide to make this, and I'm guessing you know, almost halfway, let's see. Mm. Somewhere about here. So I'm gonna probably need some more clay. Let's get some more here first. So John says, I'm an admin of a Polish Facebook fan group about Disney, so I must read all news, spoilers, and I know 80% of Last Jedi. Wow, cool. Well, don't spoil it for everybody. <laughs> so I don't want to be spoiled. My wife usually does that, actually. She, uh, <laughs> she'll always kind of give away the plots 
when her friends see movies, they give it away, and then she goes, oh, you know, this person dies. And you're like, what? I didn't know that. So, I kind of like surprises. All right, so, again, I need to shorten this. And I think how short to go is the question. Probably okay. So this will be the most acute angle, like a swept back angle. So the point will be this side and that side. And the width of which needs to be the widest as well. So I think somewhere around this long. That'd be okay. Somewhere around here. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore Janet. <laughs> I'm going to ignore any spoilers. Alright, so let's see here now. Let me flatten this a bit. How does this fit on the body itself? Let me look. There we go. I should have done this with this as well. Let's see how this looks. Right, so I need to sort of scoop this front part up to meet the apron string. It's a bit better. So this one, like with this body, with having a uh, a groove in it, I'm going to do the same thing with this as well. So this is the most squashed. So you can kind of go a little bit crazy with this one. A little extreme pose. Like this. I really need to cut my fingernails, don't I? <laughs> They're getting pretty long. <laughs> if you're a sculptor, you never want to have your, your nails as long as mine are here, for sure, because you'll probably end up scratching or dinging your sculpture by accident. 
If you're a woman, you definitely want to cut your nails off. You, know, you want to cut, make sure they're short. I know women have a thing about having long fingernails, but for sculpting purposes, you don't, it's not very helpful. Let's see here. I think I'll go like this. this and let's make sure these all fit properly <clears throat> this It's pretty good to me. So now, apply this one. Let's see what time it is. Oop. I might go over a little bit on time today to get this done, but it's totally worth it. So, So I think I mentioned on the, one of the previous shows that it's okay if, if you're making a left and right replacement system, you don't need to have each side perfectly symmetrical. In fact, that kind of takes away from the, the charmer stop motion. It doesn't have to be mechanical and perfect. Okay, so I need to just push this front part up so it meets meets the apron string and makes a connection there. I think that'll be good. And let me put the knot back on this side as well. Okay, and then put these in order. So then this one will be the final piece to put apron or the first apron on, and this one the second last apron. And since this is the highest position, this is like the passing pose in uh, in a walk cycle. So the two feet would be technically next to each other, and the body will be the highest. So this will be the stretch, like the stretch position, uh, the highest stretch. And so we want this apron to be stretched as well, and giving it some extra height will give it a little bit of a pop upwards, you know. Um, but I don't want it to be too extreme that it really sticks out in the walk cycle. So, you know, the same as with these, what I did is I just measured to make sure this one was a little shorter and this is the shortest and a little bit wider, you know, and so forth. So this one will be a little bit narrower and towards the front, but it will be the longest. So I'm gonna squash out some clay. So by the way, there's uh, if you guys haven't checked it out already, there's a few more weeks left for our uh, our five week challenges, and the challenge topic is Halloween, 
So if you guys want to have some fun, make a short, you know, whatever, short joke or gag or a short drama or something, um, or just even have some fun doing like an animation test if you like, uh, feel free to, to post on our forums. So I, I do know that uh, Zykira, who always does uh, our challenges, says that she's not really super interested in Halloween because we do that almost every year. Somebody picks Halloween, uh, the winner, <laughs> you know. But uh, I think that what we'll do is the next person, every person that, that votes, uh, or not votes, uh, that wins and can pick the next challenge, let me make sure this is good. There we go. Uh, I'll make sure that we haven't already done whatever they pick. You know, I'll try to do that from now on so that we don't have uh, duplicate challenges every time. So it's fresh. Especially I think like Clay Mara also always does our, our challenges. And so it could get boring for them because they are really consistent, you know, and we've had how many challenges? So many so far. And you kind of run out of, out of ideas if you keep having to do the same topic over and over. And it's no fault of the, the people who enter, you know, and, and win. It's just that they don't know, you know, so I just gotta, so that's the plan. So hopefully it won't get boring for everybody. I think uh, I Am Toys made mention that nobody entered yet. You know, nobody posted anything yet. But um, the common thing with these challenges is that most people will enter, or they'll enter it, but they'll post their stuff at the last moment. <laughs> That's almost always how it is. Hmm. All, right. All right, I think this will work. Let's see. Let's take this off. Now, this apron piece will be stretched the most. So, technically, I don't want to have any sort of creases in it. I want it to be smooth. Like it's pulled up and almost like it's been ironed or something. Or brand new. sure that it fits. So again, with the front, this one here isn't too bad. The front does need to come up a bit, which I'll do, just so everything lines up with the top part of the body. So I think this is pretty cool. You know, I think uh, the number of replacements that I've got here and from just that simple test we did, that the walk cycle looks good, and we didn't really have to put a lot, a lot of work into this. So, for two over the course of two shows, you know, uh, two hours worth of work, we already have a walk cycle that we can reuse over and over throughout the whole film. And you know, so it's really about time management here. A lot of people that are when, uh, like for example, when you're working on your your five week challenges. You want to make sure that you think ahead like that. You don't want to make things too complicated because then you'll never get it done in time. Uh, five weeks is not a lot of time. 
It, it could be a lot of time if, if you have 16 hours a day to work on stuff, you know, <laughs> five weeks is a lot of time. But um, if you're just doing something on the side, like we're doing here, this is the way to go. So let's test this out. Let's, uh, where is her own animation? sure you guys can see it let's get rid of the webcam and where is it there we go okay so I'm gonna put the body back in place again gonna carefully move it into place And then put the neutral body in. Take two frames. Put in a slightly squashed body. Take two frames. The fully squashed body. And we'll reverse that so she goes back up. Add some more height to her body. And go like this. More height. Ashley, let's delete those two. I don't like that. I think I need to push this back a little bit. Just a hair. Whoops. See how that is. And that's better. Because I didn't see until it popped uh, into the live view there, second live view, how far that apron was. So this one will be the final, final piece. And take two frames. And we'll play it. Let's see how it looks here. There we go. And that's all there is to it, really. So when I have a, a background moving behind her or have her actually moving forward as I animate these pieces, that will really help a lot. And also the arm will be swinging and all that. Um, but this really makes it so simple to animate for me, having these replacements like this. <laughs> so I can kind of imagine something. I should have probably like put a little, like a little piece of clay moving by or something so you could, you could see it. But anyway, um, I guess that does conclude our show for tonight. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying here. Um, all right. I don't want to read your, your spoilers in it, sorry. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, uh, that does conclude our show for tonight. Uh, I do appreciate you guys stopping by. If you have any questions about anything or uh, want to know, know more about our, uh, our challenges, just let me know, and I will get back to you. See you all next week.